Come, hear the tale of our ragtag crew, brought together upon a mysterious island by fate. They have lost, they have won, and now, alongside a rebel faction, the truth on the wind, they fight against the evil Eternals. Behind it all, an alien being of immeasurable power begins to rise once again. As the land grows cold, our party stands as a light in the darkness. Now, welcome to the Sword Cast Adventures. You're fucking lucky our business is bigger than the lot of you. If these fucking twats wanted a fight, I was wanting to give it to them. It was only Cosmetolius calling out for him to be spared. I hadn't jumped on those three and gutted them like the scurvy fucking fish they are. But I think I made my point. Didn't take long before this so-called pirate king saw we weren't gonna back down from these pricks and called off his dogs. We told him our business over a few swigs and he seemed to like the cut of our jib. But we ran into one small issue. He didn't have the fucking sword we came here looking for. Says the last pirate king stole it when he was run out of town after he was caught slaving. Says he took it with him to Winterwind. However, we were able to strike another beneficial bargain with the small man. We help him destroy some ships and run the Hecatontries out of town, and he gives us a crew to man a ship and continue our journey. The pot was sweetened even further when he promised all of his men to our army against the Edowines if we took care of this small dragon problem that he has. The next day we spent prepping and then we waited for the cover of night so that myself and Miss Rain could begin our infiltration. It sure is shaping up to be an interesting couple days. As the bell rings, as you all prepare yourself, Callus meets you um, and kind of stands with you. Uh, he kind of looks at you all and goes, okay, so now the question is, do we want to do it on top side or do I do it down here? Do you want to travel through some tunnels or do you want to make it look a little less, or do you want to see kind of what's going on up, up on the streets? Before we go, we should perhaps discuss a little bit more. Because, if I'm not mistaken, the Halberd is 500 feet offshore. I, uh, it is. It's quite far offshore. Well, I think our man Eldwin here probably could shoot that far just standing on the docks. So he wouldn't even need to come with us. Well, yeah, wasn't the plan, though, that uh, the two of you guys stay back anyways and you get ready to attack whenever it comes down and then uh, you two ladies would would ride out in the boat, try to get what you can, keeping the green one with you? Oh, I think uh, the green one and I are going to stick together or if we could have separate rowboats... Grimtuck could go to one, and I could go to the other. If the ladies get in trouble, they can use one of these stones and send a message to the rest of us, or one of us, as he pulls out the sending stones. I guess that's fine. If you all want to, you want to split up for this, that's up to you. I can get you another ship, a little dinghy, some with a, a couple oars. It's not a problem. It's easy. Uh, it just depends what y'all think, the rest of the party. Uh, there also uh, is one other thing I'd highly recommend to keep in mind. Now, each of these ships, and we've noticed this from keeping an eye on them a little bit, each of these ships has uh, what seems to be a bell used for a, a few things. One, it seems to be using to, to mark the time. They do that when they're out, they're out from port. Um, but also, it, it's a very good alarm system. You get anyone on patrol walking around, they see anything fishy, they ring that bell and people start running. So, something to keep in mind. If you're going on a ship, you either better make sure that that thing doesn't ring, or better make sure you're not seen enough for them to want to ring it. Good to know. Well, what do you all think? Should we split up? 
Yeah, I think let the ladies do their thing. On the I mean, yeah, ship. I don't think it's a good idea for us all to try to sneak on a ship to steal stuff. No, no, I would. Say, I was thinking more. Uh, Grim Tuck and I would wait in the waters below. Oh, I see what you're saying. Okay, yeah. And then if I you mean, got yeah, I think that's a good plan. Yeah, that's fine with me. Yeah, we can go out there. I mean, you both can bail too. I mean, Rain can run on water, and mm-hmm. uh, Amelia has my cloak. So, I mean, worst case scenario, they can always jump off. But it's a good idea for us to be nearby, I guess. I mean, unless they also wasn't the a plan for us to jump directly to the second boat afterwards. <laughs> I it forgot was. about Amelia's accent. <laughs> Yeah, maybe we should just plan. get ready for the second boat. <laughs> Trusting the ladies to do their thing, because immediately you could just do that thing where you just grab rain and then you're both, boom, on the other boat, right? That's my point. Yeah. What, that was plan. what if they get in the ship and can't scuttle the boat before uh, they're forced to run? Then you and I take one of these boats and go scuttle that boat. Then you better keep your head down so they don't see you. Because we can hide you. That's not the problem. All right. But again, my people don't move until they see y'all moving. Until they see fires on these ships. We're not going to start fighting the any of the sailors on the land. Gotcha. So we're going to start with the halberd and move to the tiger shark. And the last one will be the black prince. And that is going to be our boat in the end. I think that's right. Fine, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then are we setting fire to everything? Uh, wait, when are we, when is, when are we setting the fire off after, and once we're off the, the second ship? Like, am I going to, I think you, we should, you should get what you need off the halberd. Right. Burn it. Start it burning. Burn it. Go then, the... then go to the tiger shark. Got so, it. We'll okay. see if we can set up a way for the, uh, to delay. And then we'll jump to the next ship and burn that bitch down too. Got it. Eldwin here has a backup with arrows, mm-hmm. flame and arrows, just in case. Right, Eldwin? Eldwin just nods. Right, you're mask. doing your silent treatment. <laughs> God damn it, I forgot about that. <laughs> yeah. uh, Okay, so let, let me get this straight so I can tell my people about this. The two of you, and he points to Amelia and Rain, you yeah. two are going to get on the boat. And then the two of you are going to follow along on a second boat, just in case. Then you two, Rain and Amelia, you two are going to get up on the ship. You're going to grab the barrels. You're going to grab the info. You're going to time a bur- something to burn. And then you're going to get to the other ship in in some way. I you know I don't need to know. If you if you can do some fancy stuff, so can my guy. I, it's fine. But uh. So you're going to get there, and then you're going to start the fires, and that's when my, my people come in, right? Aye. That's the plan. Okay. Once you see fire on one of our two ships, you go for the Black Prince and clear it out. Well, we're going to go for the sailors on on the land. That's the, That was the plan. We're going to run them off. Yes. So th- there's a lot of sailors on land. We're going to take them out of the, out of the taverns, out of, out of any place they're sleeping. Moving and start running them down to the shore, which might not give them a lot of places to go. Let me tell you that. I mean, you could always take them prisoner, and then we could offer them up to the whole dragon thing later. But that's tomorrow's problem. <laughs> but like, he you kinda, know, he kind of looks up at you with a cocked eyebrow and goes, "Son, I ain't taking any of these fucks prisoner. That's not how I do." Oh, they'd be great dragon food, but all right. Yeah, it's just a talk. We're just. We're spitballing here. Don't look at me like that. <laughs> <laughs> he kind of looks at you and goes, how many dragons you seen? You don't know. I don't. <laughs> he, he then you see- just feed them to the ocean and see if their ties help any of them. Yeah, give them to those priests and see if they want to drown them. Or just drown them and then the priests like you better anyways. Whatever, you do what you want with them. Anyways. <laughs> 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 I'm just That's saying that's not our it, focus, Grim Tuck. Yeah, I'm also just saying there's a possibility that my people aren't going to be running people off of the Black Prince. That you're going to have to deal with that yourselves. I mean, that's fine. It's your ship, after all. You should do exactly. the thing. Fair. So listen, I got that one. We'll just run up on it, and then everybody else can join us. Elduin's got our back. Provide uh, cover. You know, shooting arrows. 
We're fine. There's a, there's a part of me that sees Grimtuck just like instantly as as Amelia and Rain jump over the tiger shark, you just see like an anime esque spiral of <laughs> waves kicking up as he just goes into high gear getting over to the Black Prince. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Yeah, it's just head cannon now, so Yep, that's now it. That's fine. To... I'm okay with it. <laughs> Um, but he kind of looks at you and goes, okay, well then, that's the plan. I'll, I'll send the word around. I'll get all my men ready. Luckily, <laughs> uh, my people like to drink and like to cavort. So they'll all be in place long before they need to be. Uh, but the second they see fire on the water, they'll make sure to be uh, throwing them out and out into the street and running them down. But uh, So you guys do that part. If we don't see fire, though, we're not acting. That fine? Absolutely. And you got the fire cover? Aye. Of course. Got it. Uh, one more time, Rain. I didn't. Oh, that's to make sure uh, Amelia had the fire covered. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, you already got the Aquamus fire. So that should do a, se- a good amount to what you need it to do. Um, yeah. More than anything, Lee, you too. He points it again to Amelia and Rain. We make sure you be careful. Yeah, you didn't get the name the butcher for nothing, and if you don't have to deal with that, it'd probably be best. I obviously notice you, you're fine warriors, but uh, you know, if you don't have to put yourself in any more danger, then you're already putting yourself going on an enemy ship. I'd recommend not. Got it. This guy doesn't know us very well. We got. <laughs> We do dumb shit. Like, we've done way dumber shit than this. <laughs> Are you saying that out loud? Yeah. I, of course I don't. I met you five seconds ago, or like a day ago, and you stole a bunch of shit from me. We almost got into a death match, and then we laughed about it and had drinks. You don't yeah, learn a about- person's inner being after just a, <laughs> just a day. Eh, it scans. I'm just saying. All right. Let's do this, ladies. What do you think? You want to go topside or uh, through the tunnels? You said you needed two ships too, right? You want one for one for you two and points to Metolius and Grimtuck and one for you two, Rain and Amelia. Um, and then, I don't think we need a ship. Or we don't need a boat. Not at all. Mm-mm. No. Okay. Are you Are you sure? I mean, I'm better off walking on the water. Um, Elduin is going to volunteer for that second boat. He's just gonna like raise his hand and sort of thump his chest. It's not time to eat right now. <laughs> not dinner time. We've got work to do, Elder. Oh, work. Man. God fucking damn it. Um, I'm going to I'm going to summon a small gust and blow your hair back. Yeah, that I'm not trying to fuck anybody here either. God. Ah. <laughs> uh. It's okay. He's really good with the bow, but he just kind of loses focus <laughs> just sometimes. Just, like, <laughs> just looking between you two, just what the fuck? Okay. <laughs> fine, fine. It's fine. Y- y'all can fuck when you're done, I guess. Uh. <laughs> um, can we say that during the day, Amelia emptied out the contents of the portable hole and put them all back, or put what she could fit back into the bag of holding? Sure. I would say that most, especially Sans... Everything. The, that skull well, no, so that's skull. Not it. the skull. Not the Tyrannosaurus yeah, skull. That would definitely not, not the T-Rex skull. Yeah, that's right, man. Everything except that. And the, the polar bear skull and the tiger skull probably couldn't fit. Uh, I mean, if it's just... If you pull out the full skull, they're kind of thin. You might be able to fit them. I'd say if you're not keeping them together, you're taking the jaw, like the lower jaw off, you could probably fit it in there. It would be a pain in the ass it. to take all the crystals in there, but it would you could do it. You'd have to like up in. Can we the just hole. leave the skulls here? Yeah, I mean we gotta Are leave them somewhere. Him? No, like just while we do this job, can we just leave the skulls here? It seems like it. Doesn't seem like that's a problem. Then I, yeah, I'm just gonna leave the three skulls in a pile, some like in the room that we slept in. He kind of looks at it and goes, "I promise I won't steal them." I don't fucking need them back. They're, they're already ruined as it is. Uh, and I'll, Amelia will hand out her bag of holding for somebody to take. Definitely me. 
and she will take the portable hole. That. Okay. Sounds good. Um, now with uh, all this, so again, uh, he kind of looks at you, goes, "You want you? Then you want to go through the tunnels? Then you don't want to go topside if you're getting the two boats." Um. Yeah, I think so. Right. Whatever will provide the most cover. Yeah. I think the tunnels would be more advised. Does anyone who wants rain, Amelia, who wants this other stone? Uh, I can take it. All right. Who should have the other? Sorry, go for it. Who should have the other one? Grimtuck or myself? All right, go for it. I tend to get distracted in these times. Oh, that's for sure. So yeah, I will also like, kind of gesture that I could hold it, but you can't. You can't. <laughs> you can't talk. Callus kind of looks at you and goes, "What the fuck do you think you're gonna do with it, Grunt? <laughs> Blow I'm on gonna, it." I'm gonna just like tap my forehead and point at him and be like, "Mm-hmm." <laughs> just like right, I forgot. <laughs> I guess I'll hold on to it. Can. Amelia wear her gauntlets and the bracers at the same time. I don't know. Yeah, d- I don't d- believe d- so. D- okay. Uh, then Amelia what? will are they, put are they... her gauntlets in the bag of holding. Okay. The bracers are like a wrist going up thing, aren't they? Yeah, but so are the gauntlets. Yeah, I mean, gauntlets come up kind of past your wrist, too. Uh, okay, I was thinking more whole cans. <laughs> yeah, but Hulk hands even go up at, like yeah. Like, <laughs> All right. You might need those bracers to, or those uh, gauntlets to lift those uh, barrels of powder. Just so you know, Amelia. Fair point. And she'll pull them out of the bag of holding and put them in her backpack. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'll take them back if you're not going to use them. It's up to you. I mean, the bracers. Yeah. Oh no, I'm definitely going to wear the bracers. Oh, oh, okay. You were taking off the gauntlets. I missed that. Yeah. You see Amelia try to like string them together, make them as a necklace. <laughs> bracers become a necklace of protection. No, I'm wearing the bracers and the gauntlets go in my backpack. Don't I get you now. Okay. Uh, he he starts leading you through tunnels. Uh, he pulls out one of the torches. Uh, his Seemingly, his, his the tiefling that has been so closely by him has uh, gone off somewhere to go do a few things. Um, he, he took him aside for a second, seemingly gave him a few bits of information that he needed. And, um, Demikos just like booked off, uh, to go inform everyone that needs, needs to be known. And he kind of pulls off, uh, torch off the wall and brings it down. This whole, this whole tunnel system is exceptionally just like filled with salt air and just like, uh, you can definitely smell the scent of the ocean down the way and there's just a dampness all around a little bit of moss growing on the sides uh and it's very dark minus his torch obviously most everyone can see just fine but it's still the torch definitely helps and has this like you see this odd slickness to the sides of the walls as though it it rarely ever seems to dry um it takes a little bit of time you seem to wheel about uh, in the direction what you can only guess to be towards the docks. And then a few moments, probably like 10 minutes later of kind of winding through these tunnels, you hear the sound of lapping water. Before we get there, yeah, Metolius would like to cast aid on Rain, Amelia, and himself. So okay. you're... HP maximum goes up by five for eight hours. Hell yeah. Oh, also, everybody should have 10 temp HP. Does everybody have that? Yep. Got it. Just make sure. Uh, Yeah. Uh, so yeah, as you hear, as that all kind of occurs, as you cast your spells and uh, kind of come to terms with what you got, uh, you see the slight bit of natural light kind of peek through as the moon seems to be out. Though uh, 
a fog has definitely collected on the water itself. And ahead of you, this kind of archway opening to what seems to be a very shoddy looking dock. Uh, two, two boats with a couple oars in each uh, tied down to a couple of the, the poles there. Uh, and then past that, you notice that this dock seems to be set under one of the main docks that you saw the ships attached to. Uh, a nice. It may have been like some form of um, waterway before, or some form of like sluice way, but now it is definitely used for some obviously shady biz. And he goes, "Here, ships. Uh, they should be what you need. If you need anything else, well, you're not going to be able to really contact me until that this is all said and done. But uh, hopefully, you got everything you need already." Yeah, I think we're good. Yep. This goes right to me. I will give a short bow. Again, I look at you and bows back. All right. Uh, well, next time we see you, we'll be uh, toasting over the, the corpses of our dead enemies. So, yeah. <laughs> fucking, <laughs> fucking sounds like a plan. So question the other the second boat is is it small enough to be operated by a single person well both are both are rowboats and both would be able to be operated by a single person cool um and i and i will have one to myself then uh that seems seems to be the issue that seems to be the plan cool oh and amelia i'm probably going to be walking up the side of the ship um am i dropping you a rope or do you have another way to get on I could get up there if needed to, but I'd rather save that for right. when we actually need it. Okay. Rope it is, then. Once we get up there, though, I can blend right in. Great. Boats. And hose. <laughs> So, uh, Eldon, are you planning on uh, traveling near to uh, Grimtuck and Metolius? Yeah, yes. So my plan was to be somewhat in between shore and the boat so that I have good lines of sight, but could also assist if I needed to in a pinch. Okay. Uh, Not a problem. It would be definitely leave you kind of out in the middle of the water, but it's not... Uh, completely un like something that isn't seen on a semi regular basis. So I guess it wouldn't be. So out I was of- I was thinking that it would be uh, it's night, right? And it is fog- night and, and foggy. foggy and foggy. So my assumption was that I just wouldn't be seen as l- until I start shooting fiery arrows. Uh, I mean, you can always roll stealth and cross your fingers on that one. I don't think you'd know. I don't think you'd know fully whether or not you'd be absolutely covered, but it seems like you, yeah. you're going to be doing pretty good. Yeah, I will. I guess I will play it by ear when I know how busy the port is. If I feel like I could be relatively stealthy, then I will travel out. Otherwise, I mean, like Matolia said, I have the range to be able to hit targets on the ship from shore. So. Oh yeah, even down below the this main dock that you're on, you don't hear you don't hear much of any footsteps. It seems like all of the all of the noise you hear seems to be coming from up into the town itself. Got the it. docks from the short amount of time you spent in this area, the docks seem to be pretty pretty quiet during the nighttime. A few, maybe a patrol or two, maybe a few people going towards um, you know, checking on their ship or going back to sleep on their ship, but by no means is there ever like you know a large gathering that would be looking out on the water got it cool then yeah i'm gonna i'm going to be stealthy and be on a boat in the middle of the you know near yeah where i can be of assistance if i need to in case shit goes sideways okay um also for the viewers at home who don't see this for my players uh all you would see is effectively this one Okay. Uh, that this is the same ship a few times, and this is a nice big ship. 
Um, and they're how far apart from each other again? The 500 feet is to the to the Halbrid. The Black Prince is docked at the uh, at the most eastern dock, and the Tiger Shark is to the almost to the western side of this port, uh, anchored off the dock. And how far uh, away is the Tiger Shark from the Halbrid? Probably about 250 feet, like halfway from where the dock, maybe like 200 feet. Okay. I don't know if you guys can see it. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So, Black Prince, Halbrid, Tiger Shark. Got it. A little triumvirate of uh, Hecatontries. Mm-hmm. Uh, there we go. Okay, so, as you, he kind of, like, sets you all up. Uh, he points out the ships. He kind of stands there with you and goes... Uh, well, uh, I guess this is uh, good luck, and uh, here's to hoping your missions go well. Hopefully I see them fires on the water very soon, and then I will let my... And we will <laughs> we will send them to the Nine Hells. Don't you worry. Sounds good. Good <clears> luck. Let's do this. You as well. I put on my water, wa- my water walking ring. Okay. Amelia pulls up the hood on the cloak of the manta ray. Elduin pulls up the hood on the cloak of elven kind. Ooh. Rain pulls up the hood on the cloak of displacement. <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> We're a bunch of edge lords. <laughs> we really are. I mean, that was right the point now. coming into this mission. Right <laughs> I guess I pulled the hood on the yeah. cloak of protection. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Metolius will also yeah. put on the cloak of protection. Yeah. <laughs> and your mask. And the mask. Let's both have masks. Nope. No glowing <laughs> eyes. No, no glowing eyes in the middle of the water. I mean, you're not. That's not a. That's not a bad point. Yep. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Also, I don't think a hood would fit over the helmet. <laughs> also true. <laughs> it's possible. Uh, so at that point, Callus uh, kind of waves you off. He. Uh, he um, douses it, or he walks off with the torch. He doesn't douse it before he leaves. And you see the torch kind of fade off back into the tunnel. All right. Ladies, you're up. All right, let's do this. Shall we? Yep. And Amelia's going to dive in. And I follow along on the surface, being stealthy AF. Grimtuck and Metolius also start paddling. Yeah. Okay. The soft sound of paddles hitting uh, hitting water is all that can be heard, and that fades out kind of and is dampened by the, the fog around you as you move out. Um, what I'm guessing is that neither of the two boats ever go farther than um, Amelia and Rain at the moment, yeah, right? we're not going to outpace them. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, and it's Amelia pretty... would go slow, go slow enough for the boats to keep up. Okay. Uh, so, I would like you all to roll a stealth check. You got it. Thirty. Oh boy! Oh boy! Woo, doggy. Twenty-two for Elduin. That's not bad. Uh. A 16 for Grim Tuck. It's not bad. Uh, 19 for Amelia. Ooh. 15 for Metolius. Sweet. So, as far as you all know, you are exceptionally stealthy. Um, and the waters, the waters are pretty calm. So, especially like Amelia, you're able to just like sw- uh, glide through it with the cloak, with it with very little trouble. And rain. Uh, you get no peaks or valleys from the waves at all. Uh, so you're able to kind of just like quickly tap your foot across the water as you use the water walking ring. Uh, the th- three of you, uh, Metolius, Grimtuck, and Elduin are able to keep pace, never go too far. And as you do, you, Amelia and Rain, you find yourself just at the outskirts of the ship as you all begin to approach. How high up um, is it to the deck? 
it's a decent amount of ways. It's probably like 30 or 30 feet up from the, oops, sorry, up from the lot, the, the water. I'm okay. going to... I'm gonna par I'm gonna m m maneuver my boat so that it is a hundred or so feet from the ship. A hundred or so feet from the ship. Mm -hmm. Got it. Let me just double check, but I'm almost positive that you're looking at. Aha! That'll help. No, that doesn't help at all. <laughs> you got, you got me wrong. good. You got me good. Oh, not you. Sorry, I'm talking about myself. Aha, uh -huh, that information helps me not at all. Excellent. Uh, no, you, you do that. You kind of, and you said, once again, you kind of wheel around over on this direction to kind of, this is water. So you wheel around kind of to keep an eye, but not, not be seen. Um, yes, I would just I want I want to be within striking distance of myself, but a little far for anybody <laughs> on the boat to observe me. Okay. You're always so in you striking like distance of yourself. <laughs> is that what I said? Yes, <laughs> it is. <laughs> <laughs> but it. really, truly, you're not wrong. <laughs> I'm not wrong. Yeah. Uh, so you you hang back as you let the the other four kind of move ahead of you. Um, as Amelia finds herself just at the very um, edge of the hull itself. Rain, you see Amelia's uh, kind of manta-like uh, hood poke out of the water as she meet, make both of you seem to make it right to the edge of the hull, right at the, right at the edge of the water. Uh, Grimtuck and Metolius, you see um, Amelia and Rain kind of make it there. Do you hang back or do you kind of also sidle up next to the ship? I would motion to try and get us within 30 feet of the deck. Yeah, I'm, I'm piloting the boat. so I Okay, so you hang back as well, then. Like, 30 feet of the deck is, is a little ways off. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I basically communicate to Grimtuck that I want to be able to misty step up to the, the deck of the ship, if possible. Uh, if I need I to. Would... I would silently communicate that we would be closer sidling up close to the deck, or we would be safer and less easy to spot closer to the deck than farther away. Oh, that's fine. Far farther away, he we're going to draw more attention when somebody walks by with a lantern. He'd also probably, uh, you, you also notice that it would, you'd have to be pretty close to the actual side of the ship to actually be able to miss you step up. If you're 30 feet away from it, you still have a decent vertical yeah, I agree. I would. Uh... All right. So, as you all decide, um, you are all deciding how close to get. Uh, Elduin, you stayed back a little ways. Uh, mm -hmm. Amelia and Rain had just made it to the to the side of the ship, and uh, I know Grimtuck and Metolius were discussing uh, where to be next. I defer to Grimtuck. Yeah, I think. Yeah, I will sidle us up close to the side of the ship. Okay. That way, if anybody looks over, we are less detectable than we would look like as a ship coming up on them. Mm hmm. It we also. Should have, we should have brought fishing poles. <laughs> <laughs> Dressed like us. That would be I love hard. it. Honestly, <laughs> dress like you guys. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be great. That's fucking um, awesome. It would also Roll just, deception. <laughs> just so you know, uh, Metolius, it would also give you a chance to, if you need to, in a pinch, you'd be able to bamf up there. That's uh, what I'm going for. I know. You're close enough now where you'd be able to get onto the, the deck if you need to. Um, okay. So. We make it to uh, Amelia and uh, Rain as you get up next to the side of the ship. Uh, Elduin, roll me a perception check. Gladly. Ooh. Uh, 23. 23? You, yeah. you, as you're kind of hanging back and looking over this, you notice that there are what seem to be three lanterns kind of piercing the fog. You see, like, the arc, just, like, the actual tunnel of light coming from the lantern itself bearing out. 
Uh, there seem to be three lanterns moving about the, the upper deck of the ship. Okay. It's hard to see the person behind the lantern. You kind of see a more like a like a black form behind it. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, and and they they all look like they are of normal stature. They all seem that way. Okay. Not one of them is a giant. Great. Um, and do do I see them? Do I see the like? How am I trying? I'm trying to try this. Do I see evidence that there is more than just three on deck? Like. Though there are people up there who are not holding lanterns. Um, what'd you get again for your perception? Just twenty-three. Sure. Twenty-three. You don't seem to see anyone else on deck at the moment. Okay. Uh, um, but you're also at a low angle. You can't really tell what's on the other side of the ship. So, but as far as you can tell from where you are, those are the three people you can see. Gotcha. And can I see my comrades approaching and climbing? Yeah. Uh, you can see your comrades. I don't think anyone started climbing yet. But uh, they have made it to the side of the ship, and you definitely notice them as you're pretty. You're a little farther back, but you're definitely within, like, you know. Awesome. Earshot well, effectively, but also within sight. Got it. Awesome. So um, I would like to take a torch and kind of wedge it in the seat s- such that I could light it at a moment's notice if I needed to. Sure. And then I would like to have a bow and bow with an arrow out and... Um, it, hold an action for if uh, combat starts. Either if my comrades get seen um, or whatnot. Sure. I don't know if I'd actually, like, I, like mechanically speaking, I wouldn't say you'd need to, like, hold an action, but you can have an arrow knocked and ready. Mm-hmm. Though I appreciate the, the thought process on that. Um, yeah. So, yeah, you, you are prepared to fire if need be. Mm-hmm. Um, not knowing exactly what comes next. Amelia, Rain, you make it to the side of the ship. Amelia, you still sit just about shoulder, shoulders under the water, your head just bobbed above, mm-hmm. while Rain stands next to you, uh, close and sidling up to the ship itself. About probably 20 feet off from where you two are, near closer to the back of the ship, you see Metolius and Grimtuck. Uh, now, I would like all four of you, the ones closer now, to roll a perception check of the hearing variety. Amelia got a 17. One. 13. Uh, 21. Uh, so everyone but Rain hears the sound of what seem to be footsteps. Rain, the sound Wait. of the lapping waves kind of catch you off guard, and you're unable to kind of parse out um, any footsteps above you. Question. You Rain, do... how did you roll a one on anything? I thought you That's had a reliable talent. Oh, it's only um, it's only skill checks I have proficiency. I can oh, do the okay. Yeah. Sorry to interrupt, guys. Not at all. No worries. Uh, okay. So yes, you you hear uh, the the waves around you. You hear the lapping of water, and that is all. Otherwise, the rest of you all hear the sound of uh, leather booted fo- feet, kind of uh, stepping upon wooden planks high above you. Uh, you even see, I would say, uh, the couple looking up see the the arc of light kind of spraying out from a lantern in the mist. And then it uh, turns and disappears out off the side. I'm going to ask Rain, uh, where do you want to go up? So from the outside, there's nowhere that... I'd have to go to the deck, right? There's nowhere, like, halfway up the ship I could sneak in, like, any kind of, like, openable, like, window or anything that I can see. Uh, roll me one more perception check. You got it. Three! <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> wow. <laughs> it's foggy. It's, hard. it's, it's foggy. It's pretty foggy. It's hard to tell. <laughs> somehow I'm the good at not waves being seen, are... not seeing things. <laughs> yeah. Somehow you've gone blind with lapping waves. <laughs> it's hard to tell the ship, again, the kind of bowing out of the ship's hull and the angle you're standing at is you're trying to keep as close to the edge as possible. It's a lot harder to see anything on the sides or above you to be able to tell. Okay. Uh, you did hear there are cannons on the ship, so by all rights, there might be, but that you but don't know. But I, I can't see them from where I'm at. No. Okay. You cannot. Um, 
I'm gonna... I'm gonna walk up on the side in case I stumble across any, um, like, cannon openings or any windows or anything I can sneak in. Otherwise, I'm gonna go peek above on the deck and see if, uh, if there's anywhere I can get up unseen. Okay. I was saying that to Amelia. Sounds good. Uh, okay, uh, I'll make sure and keep an eye on you. Yeah, keep an eye on me, and uh, once I find somewhere secure, I'll let a rope down for you. You got it. Alright, I start. Very, very quietly. As quietly as possible, walking up the side of the ship. Roll me another stealth check. You got it. Uh, that would be a 25. Uh, so you begin to walk. You kind of take a moment and place a foot upon the side of the ship, and instantaneously, your foot feels like it stays there as you begin to move um, up the ship. Uh, no more than about 10 feet up the side of this, the hull itself, you notice what looks to be large, probably about two and a half to three feet wide hatches, all closed on the side. Um, can I listen at one of them and to see if I hear any activity, like, behind Ab them? Absolutely. Another perception? Yes, please. Mm. Mm. Six! <laughs> it's hard to tell. <laughs> thick wood. Thick uh, wood. Thick wood. Uh, it is hard to tell if you hear anything at all. You don't seem to hear anything, uh man-made by all rights okay uh can i attempt to open one of the hatches not like rip it open just like you know enough to see if i see light inside or anything absolutely so you take a moment you kind of uh roll me now, don't roll me anything. You're, you're already well into do uh, stealthy as you go up. You take um, just a slight peek as you kind of pull your hands just to the edge of this this uh, uh, this covering, and you kind of lift it up. You don't see any light inside here. Um, but what you do notice is that right in front of the hole, mm -hmm. the, the cover... Uh, right behind it seems to be a shiny uh, metal tube, most likely it can. Got it. Is there, like, room enough for me to get in? Um, uh, it seems like you could you could kind of slip in. Okay. They Generally speaking, when cannons aren't being used, they're pulled back enough. All right. I will open the hatch and uh, slide in next to the cannon. you do that um and then what do i see inside it looks like i'll be able to like get past this point like you is see, there another door or anything you see a good few amount of things you see what looks to be um your dark vision only lasts so far um and again it's it gets a little dicey as it as it goes farther out mm -hmm. but what you notice is there seems to be six cannons there seems to be a staircase here going up uh, just okay. to the, if this is north from where it's stationed, yeah. North would be this way. Uh, so to the north, there's a staircase that seems to go up mm -hmm. uh, a little ways down. Uh, there seems to be a door to the western side, a door to the eastern side. And then what looks to be a little alcove that could be a... a another either doorway or maybe a staircase down. Okay. And then um, in between everything else, in the very center, there is what seems to be a mast that um, kind of cuts through this whole floor and goes from floor to ceiling. And right here. as far as I can tell, there are no other living beings in this area currently. In this area, there are no other living beings currently. Okay. Um, I will throw a rope down for Amelia. Okay. <clears throat> uh, 
Uh, if there is somewhere I could tie it, that would probably be best. But you said it's only it was only like ten feet up. It was only about ten feet up to okay. get to this. Yeah, it's not. To get to the hatch, um, you could tie it to the cannon if you need to. They're mm -hmm. very heavy. Amelia is not. Yeah, I, yeah, I'll do that. I won't spend a lot of time on it though, since it's only like ten feet. She has to climb, but I will like, I'll like, you know, tie it around the cannon and also like brace it with like my own. Like, sure. hold it back myself. Okay. So you do that. You tie one end to the cannon. You kind of rope, uh, run the rope behind your back and uh, kind of grab on one side towards the cannon, the other side out the, out the, uh, at the hole, and you throw the, the rope down to Amelia. Uh, Amelia, a moment later, you hear a small splash right next to your head as you notice the rope hanging down. Grab it and start to climb up. Okay. Roll me a athletics check, please. Fifteen. Without a question, you climb that rope. Uh, you make it to this uh, this hatch right at the edge. You notice that right inside stands Rain in front of a uh, decently large, shiny black cannon. Uh, inside is pitch black, minus the slight bit of moonlight now that the hatch has let in. And... Uh, she kind of helps you in. You find yourself both now in there. In this room, like I explained, the rain is large uh, with a... Uh, from what you can see... You have dark vision, right, Amelia? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah I thought so. Uh, you see a staircase going up. What seems to be an alcove at the uh, the eastern... Or the western side. To the northeastern side, there's a staircase going up. To the eastern side, there's a doorway. To the western side, there's a second doorway and then amassed in the very dead center. Okay, and seeing the cannons here, Amelia looks around. We don't see any barrels of anything. You actually find... Uh, well, here, roll a roll an investigation check. Uh, can I help? <laughs> yes, you can. Um, actually, I With have... advantage. Okay, I, I have a proficiency in that if we want me to roll the uh, investigation. I mean, I'm proficient too, but I bet your intelligence is higher than mine. Uh, I also get, since I have proficiency in it, I get my, I can't roll lower than a 10 on it. Perfect. Cool. And so that'll be with advantage, DM? Yes, it would be. Uh, rad, that'll be a 19. A 19? Mm-hmm. You notice that there seem to be two barrels down, two large barrel-like casks down here, um, propped up next to the cannons. One probably about five feet away from you. The other on the opposite side um, stuck here. Okay. <clears throat> Two and he wants 30 of them? Jesus. Okay. Well, hopefully there's going to be a bunch on our ship that we're keeping, so yeah. it'll be easy. But uh, Obviously. Um, also, roll a perception check. Me? Two. Both of us? Yeah, uh, both of you. Much better. 16. Uh, 10 for Amelia. I don't have the waves distracting me in here. <laughs> Both of you hear the sound. Uh, it's true. You know, you get inside it, damage the waves. It makes it much easier. Both of you hear the sounds of footsteps on the floor right above you. Okay. About two sets. Uh, and they seem to be circling whatever is above you. Um, you does the barrel that... Oh, sorry. Go ahead. I was going to say, you even notice at one point, as you hear the footsteps kind of cross above your head, you notice that the staircase to the northeast seems to glow a little bit as a bit of lantern light kind of passes by it. That goes away, though. Okay. Um, um, and there's two doors, you said? Uh, yes, there's one to the east and one to the west. The barrel that's right next to Amelia, does it have a lid on it? Uh, it does. Amelia's going to walk over and pull out her dagger and just pop it open real quick and take, take a peek inside. Okay. Probably a good call. Uh, you pop it open and find a large pile of silty black powder. Perfect. Um, uh, it seems like this one may have been used a little bit, but not, not recently. Okay. Um, and it... And there's a door right next to it, it looks like. Uh, there's a door pretty damn close, probably about 10 feet away. Um, 
I'm going to turn around and move over towards the other barrel to give it a peek. Okay. You notice as you get closer now that there is a staircase uh, right over here uh, that seemingly goes down. Okay. Uh, so you do the same, a dagger in the a dagger in the uh, barrel. Yep, and just take a peek. Seems to be the same thing. Another another whole barrel worth of black powder. Dope. Um, Amelia is gonna move over next to Rain and uh, just whisper to her. These both seem to be that black powder that we're supposed to be looking for. Should we grab them real quick? Yes, absolutely. And Amelia is going to quietly pull out the portable hole and lay it out on the ground. Okay. You do that, you open it up, uh, revealing just a Vanta Black esque space below you. Uh, and I like signal for Rain to help me. Yeah. I help Amelia get the barrels into the hole. Okay. Uh, so it. You do that. It takes just a few moments as you like lift the barrels up and you cautiously lower them down into the hole. But being that there's nothing else in the holes themselves, uh, as you like, as you let go and let them drop, they don't make any real noise. Okay. Deep with it. Uh, when we put them in there, I would try and kind of like scoot them over to whatever edge they are, so that we have room to put more in. Okay. All you need to do is fold it in half and shake it. <laughs> <laughs> just kind of push on one side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You just feel around for the barrel and make sure to, like, you know, push <laughs> it over. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, you two kind of collect yourselves. Uh, you hear what seems to be the sound of footsteps again above you. Okay. Also, as you're kind of over here more the, here... You also hear what seems to be snoring coming from over in this direction. Gotcha. From, like, behind that door over there? From behind the, the western door, there seems to be snoring. Okay. Um, do you think we should go check that other door down at the night point to the, the eastern door? I think yeah, it might be easier to check a room that uh, doesn't have anyone in it first. So yeah, then we'll I, well, I'll go listen at the door. So I hear snoring because it's what the, the one I'm hearing the snoring from is the western one, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So then I'll go to the eastern one and listen at the door and see if I hear anything. Okay. So you move over. Move over to the eastern door. Uh, roll a perception check. Kind of listening in. Seventeen. Seventeen. You also seem to hear a decent amount of uh, snoring coming from that room too. Got it. Leaving it alone. Um, and there's people above us. Mm -hmm. But it sounded like two sets of footsteps. You said. Yes. Um, do you think there might be more barrels if we go down? And I point to the staircase going down. Hopefully. If not, then even just getting a layout of the place wouldn't hurt. Yeah. I think we'll head for the staircase going downward. Okay. Uh, you make it to the top of the staircase going downwards as you hear those that same kind of clatter of footsteps above you. I'd like you to roll a uh, stealth check. You got it. <clears throat> uh, also, Grimtuck, Metolius, are you guys doing anything as you're out and about? Nope. nope. Not mm -hmm. okay. we are just we're sticking quiet. to the plan. Yeah, we're just being quiet as possible. Got it. Sounds good. Uh, 23 for my stealth. 
Amelia. Uh, six. <laughs> Both of you think you're extremely stealthy. Got it. <laughs> Did you guys bring your cardboard boxes? <laughs> <laughs> Dang it, no. No, that's a failure on your part. <laughs> well, if you have minor illusion, you know, you could just... <laughs> it's true. Also, what's cardboard? Question yeah, question. that's true. <laughs> Fair. Uh, you two begin to move down the stairs. To this and I'll be to... listening carefully as we descend the staircase. Okay. Roll me oh. a perception check. As you do, what you notice is you make it down. 18. You're making it 18. Sounds good. You make it. Amelia 18. also got an 18. Awesome. Awesome. Both of you hear the sound of heavy snoring coming from a decent distance away from the stairs but seemingly like, on this floor on the floor down yeah okay so but nope. you also notice that as you start walking down the stairs you you notice that you are definitely breaking the the water line mm -hmm. and you can hear the sound of water kind of like lapping against the side that you're walking next to All right, uh, well, if there's more people sleeping down here, I guess we'll probably head back up. And I'll signal that to Amelia. Okay. Uh, while we are down here, do we see anything? Oh, that's a good question. Like, dude, can we Did get you a... you actually bit... make it down to the... Down to the lower, like, lower level? I mean, I can always sneak a little forward. Um, and take a glance like sure. from the staircase sure i can wait here yeah I'll, I'll i'll sneak up okay amelia kind of huddles on the staircase as rain gets down rain your tiefling eyes show you a few things you notice that just to the the western side of you as you get to the bottom of the stairs there is a doorway um and then in the very center of the mast and then you notice a bunch of just cots and uh, what seems to be uh, slung almost hammock-like areas all over this area. Uh, and you, you the, the snoring seems to be coming from sailors mm -hmm. sleeping down here. Got it. Uh, I will... also... Oh, sorry. You also notice a small clumping of barrels and things here and then boxes in the very far back. Okay, so there are more barrels, but... Uh, there are barrels... But yeah, we don't know. We don't even know if there's anything need. in them. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I will head back up. Okay. You head back over to Amelia. Um, are we back up at the top of the stairs now? Okay. Yes. Um, yeah, I think that's pretty much just barracks down there. Uh, there was a door, but there's a lot of sleeping guys, so I don't think it's a good idea. Shit, well, there's there. people sleeping everywhere, it seems like. Well, our only other option is up. We hear when we're hearing footsteps up there. Um, yes, they definitely have at least a few people on patrol. Yeah. I mean... What if we start with the room that has the least people sleeping in it? Yeah, I suppose so. I mean... I mean, I doubt they would leave that information in a place that's unguarded anyways. That's true. Um, was there any particular room of the two that sounded like it had less people snoring? Uh, yes, the eastern door seemed to be uh, more than just, pretty much just a single person snoring. Okay. I will go sneak that, I will go crack that door open and see what my tiefling eyes can see. I would like you to roll another stealth check as you make it over to the doorway. 25. To open it. Damn. For fucking reals, man. <laughs> Damn. I can't roll below a 23. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you make it over to this door over here. Mm -hmm. uh, Amelia, I'm guessing you kind of follow along to a point. 
Oh, definitely. Yeah. Uh, and you crack the door open. You find inside um, what looks to be a desk as well as a small chair, a few notes and things upon it, as well as like a, a thick uh, leather-bound book. Uh, and then off in the corner, there seems to be a bed of some kind and a decently large individual kind of sleeping in it. Um, can I gather maybe a rank from anything? Like, do I see uh, any, like, clothing in the room that I could gather is, like, a captain's jacket or anything? Or uh, I guess there is what seems to be, like, a wardrobe, mm -hmm. but no, nothing openly, like, out and about. Okay, it already seems weird that it's, like, one guy sleeping in a room mm -hmm. when everyone else is sleeping in barracks. I? Yes. Oh, man. Oh, okay. Fuck him up. I know, I'm really tired. <laughs> trying to sleep. Kill him. Um... Just get the notes and go. Fuck it. Enter Sandman. Okay. Uh, I kind of want to just cast darkness around him so that if he woke up, all he would see was blackness. Okay. Um, but darkness doesn't have any verbal components, does it? Like, do I have to make noise to cast that spell? Uh, let me see. I don't think so. Let me see. Darkness. Uh, Hello, darkness, my old friend. Darkness. Charlie Murphy. Charlie Murphy. Uh, there is a verbal. Yep. Yeah, yeah there it is does a have verbal. Component. Component. Dang it. Yeah. Um, but he's snoring pretty loudly. He does seem to be snoring pretty loud. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna, I'm gonna cast darkness, but I'm gonna say it as under my breath as I can, that it would still work. Um. If Amelia sees Rain making any sort of move, uh, she's gonna walk up behind her and cast guidance. Okay. I would say you start hearing Rain speaking in uh, her tongue as she does. Uh, and then, yeah, you walk up and cast guidance upon her. And what? And how does that help? What does that do? I, can't, I forget. Uh, so for the next, in the next minute, you can add a D4 to an ability check that you make. Got it. That's what, And that's just once, right? Yep. Got it. Okay. That's yeah. I thought it was something along those lines. Red. Uh, well, I will cast darkness as quietly as possible, just mm -hmm. around this sleeping dude, and I will start uh, quietly going through the books and stuff on the desk and pocketing anything that looks like it could have anything to do with trade routes or any information on the ship or any of that stuff. Okay. Uh, so I would like you to roll an investigation as you walk over. Uh, actually, I'd like you to roll another stealth check and an investigation check. You got it. And so nice stealth is 24. Okay. You walk and you blink over to the desk. Investigation is a 16. A 16? Mm-hmm. So you kind of take, you don't take your time, obviously. You you try to make sure that you're in and out as quickly as yeah, possible. Yeah, I'd rather take way more than I need and like, but I would also like to confirm that I have what I'm looking for at the same time. Uh, what you notice is that a lot of this stuff is more so just like, basic maps of the area this isn't none of these like you you unfurl them for a moment and you kind of look at them none of these seem to be the the notes you're looking for and the leather bound book is just what looks like a ledger um names rank just pretty simple stuff basically just a ledger of all the the crew on board this does not seem to be the notes you're looking for okay um well as to not raise any suspicion, un un any unnecessary suspicion, I will not take any of it if it's not what I'm looking for. And I will uh, I will head back out of the room and I will um, like break darkness like once I'm out of the room. 
I'll drop it. Sounds good. Uh, as you drop it, you also, you're both it, within this room with the cannons. You hear the same sound of footsteps. And as you do, you notice that the uh, the staircase glows a light for just a moment as they pass. Okay. Um, well, do we try to head up? Do you want to at least maybe just take a peek? I could take a peek. Decide if it's worth going. I mean, we can also always, um, like, go back out the way we came and go and, like, climb further up the ship if we had to, but, I mean, I think... Is it another floor above us, or is it the deck? I don't know. Maybe we should find that out first. Okay. Uh, Yeah, I will go up the stairs as quietly as possible. Um, Preferably, like, I might even wait until we see another lantern light, like, past the top of the stairs, like, count some amount of time when he passes and sneak and, like, take a glance up. Okay. But I yeah, know it doesn't not take very not to approach. Sure. It doesn't take very long. Um, probably a few more minutes and uh, you see that same, the same situation. You see the lantern pass by. And then the footsteps kind of idle off. And then I will peek my head up. Okay, roll me a perception check as you get up to the top. Natural 20. Well, there you go. Four eight. Uh, you notice that, that this is not seemingly the 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 deck of, the top deck of the ship. This is actually another floor. As you make it to the uh, top of the stairs, you look around and see a room filled with uh, cloth-covered supplies in giant boxes. There's also a whole horde of other barrels up here. There we go. As well as another door to the west... And at the very far end, there seems to be another door to the east, as well as a, a small um, rowboat kind of stuck down below deck. Uh, this also, as you kind of make it to the top, you notice that there are two individuals kind of circling this area on patrol as they seem to be rounding... Uh, all these supplies. They seem to be just patrolling around them. Alright. Um, I do notice at the very far end there seems to be another uh, staircase that goes up. The moonlight kind of pierces through as it kind of like makes this slight glow of a door frame open up on the western side of this next floor. know what I want to do. All right. Uh, and if you wait there for just a few more moments, you notice them start to get closer. Okay. I know. I, I go back down and I inform Amelia of everything I saw, that there's more barrels up there, that there's two guys, and that it's not the deck, that it's another another floor. Shit. Um, did it look like there was more rooms? Um, I, did I see doors at all? You did. You saw. Did. You saw a door to the west. Yes. Or a door to the east. Sorry. Um, I saw there's at least a door to the east. What about any barrels? Yes, there were barrels. It seems to be mostly supplies. Um, I mean, I can take one of those guys down really quick and really quietly. If. If we can do that, I can take his place. I was thinking pretty much that same thing. <laughs> All right. So yeah, I think we should wait for that lantern light to come back around to the staircase. I should assassinate a fool. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, it's getting good. I know. So excited. <laughs> I know. Yeah, this has people. been great. Kill Should some guys. Take the lantern and continue to walk around the room as if you were him. And hopefully, not that lantern light not being gone won't alert the other guy, and I will sneak over and kill him too. That works for me. And be ready to fight um, if we have to. We have to be quick. Yeah, we have to be real quick. 
Um, All right. And Amelia is going to take her staff and like put it on her back. Okay. So that she can have free hands to help do whatever. Sounds good. Uh, so let me just. So the plan is, you guys are going to wait until the the light goes around and rain. You're going to do your job. Yep. The second I see that light approaching the <laughs> again, I'm gonna I'm gonna assassinate a bitch. Um, <laughs> I'm like a good bitch. You know, yeah. Happens. Do your and, job. Do my fucking I'm job. <laughs> and I'm gonna be I'm gonna be right behind her and I'm gonna be ready to like catch the guy or try and put my hand over his mouth or like grab whatever weapons yeah, like, he's carrying. Anything to like yeah, ex- anything to like absorb any noise that he might make from being taken out. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh so you do as you wait at the bottom of the stairs, uh as you hold your position, I you see the light kind of crest to the top of the staircase. Uh, as it be- as they begin to make their rounds about there, I'd say with about a five second lead, Rain, uh, you notice him turn the corner and start to walk away. Uh, excellent. I will um, put my rapier in his back. Um, it is automatically a crit and it's sneak attack. Yep. So you stand high. You you. Spicy. You move quickly <laughs> up the stairs, uh, and you see this man kind of turn, turn, ready to round the the corner around the supplies in the center of this room. And as you do, you meet him right to the back, and your rapier uh, finds its home. Do you Got say it. anything anime esque when you do it? I don't say shit. Not a girl. <laughs> Excuse me, I am a professional. <laughs> okay, so I just say shh. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> Go to sleep. Six. Eight. Twelve. Fifteen. So. 65. Oh, yeah. With one quick motion, your rapier uh, slides in and out of this guy, removing him from this mortal coil. Uh, You also use that momentum to turn him down the stairs. And Amelia, I would like you to roll a quick athletics check to catch him. Oh, boy. Ten. (laughs) He's not super heavy. He's also not weighed down with a bunch of armor. You catch him and you're able to kind of like lower him down just into the staircase. You get a good look uh, at his face. That's what I was gonna ask for. So as I lower him, I take a good look at his face and I grab the lantern out of his hands and my form shifts and I appear to look exactly like him. Yes. yes what do you do as this. you become? As you I become, I just immediately stand up and walk up the stairs and begin to finish his lap around the room. Okay. And uh, I, you will... notice. Go ahead. <laughs> at the far end, basically opposite. Only a few steps behind, you notice that there is another guy exactly the same. Rain, you once again follow your way down to the stairs. Amelia, you take up the charge and start to rotate around the room. Uh, on the opposite side, there is a, there's a guy. He doesn't seem to speak to you in any way, shape, or form. He seems to be just doing this job as there is a huge pile of, of things, barrels, boxes, and other supplies in the center of this room. Perfect. Amelia uses that to her advantage and begins to take in everything she can about this room. Okay. This room is pretty decently large. It's about the same height as the previous one you were on. Uh, The mast in the center uh, still kind of sticks out and up through the ceiling above. Uh, On the far ahead of you, your lantern now shines and catches what looks to be a staircase going up to the top deck, which is lit by the moon. Uh, in front of you and to slightly to the your right there is a uh, a rowboat kind of stuck down here and held as it is in uh, storage as they don't need it up on deck or at least they seem to not need it up on deck in the middle of this room there is a large stack of barrels almost leaning uh, leading to the ceiling seems to be a good amount as well as a lot of other seemingly supplies you even notice a few bits of a uh, few sacks of grain and some fruit and things like that too covered with cloth um, and then at the far end there seems to be another door uh, next to the staircase to the uh, western side 
Okay. Um, yeah, like I said, Amelia uses the other guy's uh, silence to her advantage and just begins to lap the room at the same pace uh, as the other guy's going and just assume the dude's position. Okay. Assume that position. As you begin to walk around rain, you notice the shine of a lantern catch the top of the stairs. And I repeat Stab that, that perform- person too. <laughs> As he turns the corner, Rain meets him uh, right to the back and does your thing. Hi. Stab all the people. <laughs> okay. Uh, 16. Uh, Twenty-four, twenty-seven, thirty-two, thirty-eight. What's thirty-eight plus forty-four? Uh, um, oh gosh. Uh, Disgusting. 82? Eighty-two. 82. Yeah. I, does that beat <laughs> Metolius' entire score for damage on one hit? Uh, no. Didn't Metolius do over a hundred? Yeah, I, I know somebody uh, did over a hundred at some point. Oh. I thought you did. Never mind then. But uh, it, does, beat it, my doesn't, it doesn't beat the killing blow on the golem. Or it does beat the killing blow on the golem. Does it? Okay. I'm pretty sure it does. Well, there you go. Rain, you officially met, met to the top of our killing chain. Congrats. <laughs> you just have to not number one in the dead pool. I can, like... <laughs> uh, okay. So, Rain, you take out another. As this guy slumps down to the ground, you just lean him against the banister. Would I see that or notice it? I would say you'd see the uh, the slight twist of the lantern he was holding. Okay. As you round the corner, you know that your lantern kind of encapsulates Rain kneeling next to this guy. Just gently setting this guy on the floor. Yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Perfect. Once I see that, I just imme- I just like start to like lift up coverings and take a look at things. Okay. In the middle of this room, there seems to be about. Roll me an investigation check, just, just for a shit. Uh, I'm here. helping to look. That counts for anything. Sure. Why not? Uh, investigation check is a s- ten. With advantage. Uh, no, not with advantage. Advantage makes it a ten. <laughs> I rolled lower on the second one. <laughs> you see um, a large swath of different crates and barrels here. You notice that there seem to be about maybe close to 18 of those similar barrels as you saw below next to the cannons, kind of stuck under and around the mast here. Uh, I do the dagger thing and take a peek and see if uh, any of them are the black powder. After the first three, you kind of notice that they're all stuck together. Uh, And within this area, you find that there is a huge amount. Uh, Again, about 18 of them. Stuck together in what way? Uh, Like, as in, like, together in this area. They're all together in storage thing. Cool. Got it. Yeah. Sorry, I thought you were saying they were literally, like, like they had, like, tied a rope around them all or something. No, uh, no. It seems like they 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 gather them together instead of you know le- leaning them next to anything that the grain would be in. It'd be a kind of or the coffee. For Got it. Matter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It'd be kind of fucked up. You, you yeah, put the right. powder next to the coffee, and <laughs> it's to a hell of a day. That black black, you know. Uh, I'm just going to quietly motion for rain to like come over to where I am. Oh yeah, I will. Okay. I will start helping. Uh, yeah, you do. Uh, rain, you move over as you guys are standing on this. Uh, on this middle floor, you also notice the sound of what seems to be footsteps above you as uh, the patrols on the deck seem to move about. As we're doing this, I will keep an ear for anything that sounds like anybody descending a staircase or any lights coming from the staircase coming from up there. You sure, know. this seems to be pretty, uh, as far as you can tell, this is just them kind of rounding about. Yeah. You also notice a few others kind of on the farther end, just the small clicks of heels as a couple seem to be uh, moving back and forth and back and forth. Uh, and Eldo and I would say at this point, you uh, roll me another perception check. Gladly. Um, let me check something. Ah, 
Damn it. All right. Uh, nine. Nine. Your companions have been in there for a good amount of time at the moment, but you notice that the the patrols on top of the ship seem to be acting normally. Great. I will continue. I'll, mm-hmm. I'll stay the course. As the one who can, as the outside, effectively the outside observer seeing into this, you notice that no alarm has been spiked at the moment. I am very happy with this. Uh, is there anything, any, are there any developments that are going on the shore? I just want to make sure that, you know, our, the, 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 the land muscle has not uh, started early or anything. Uh, not that you can hear. Uh, you look back to see nothing seemingly happening. You see people milling about on the shore. Perfect. Nothing. There's no, like, rock, uh, like, rankous attacks going on. Love it. Excellent. Okay. Uh, Amelia and Rain, you open the hole. Uh, just for point of order, how long has it been? How many minutes, roughly? Probably about 10. Maybe, maybe... 15, more like 10 <clears throat> okay. at the moment. Cool. I think Metolius and Grimtuck would still be maintaining, and if anything, we would be trying to position ourselves so that no one on the tiger shark can see us mm-hmm. next next to the halberd. No worries. Again, with the with the mist coming in, you all do the same. Uh, if you guys want to kind of crouch a little bit and roll me a stealth check, go for it. Just to make you all selves doubly sure. Cox guy. Oh, 18. As right. good. Let's see here. It is. Hold on. Come on, little tablet. Uh, you can go, go, little tablet. You can do it. Uh, nine. As far as you know, you <laughs> have been quite stealthy. But okay. collectively, you kind of hunkered down, and you notice Mentolius Grimtuck, or. Grimtuck, you notice Matoli is doing the same thing. He kind of hunkers down, tries to set in the mist as best as possible. Cool. Uh, yeah. Rain, Amelia, you lay down the hole. Yes, and then before we start to uh, hoist barrels into the hole, Amelia is going to reach into a pouch on her belt and pull out uh, her small vial with a dead firefly in it. Mm-hmm. And she's going to move over to the edge of the to the back of the room and kind of set it on the floor by the stairs, um, and then uh, she's going to the cast a, sorry towards the, the stairs way. that go up. Okay. Um, and as they are putting barrels into the hole, she's just like every minute or so she's gonna have uh, she's gonna cast light as the jar kind of lights up, and then she's gonna extinguish it to have the movement of the uh, patrol seem to continue. Excellent, excellent, yes. excellent. Yes. Awesome. Uh, okay, so as you keep doing this, you start moving barrel after barrel after barrel. Um, it takes probably about five minutes to move so many back into the hole of them itself, um, but you now seemingly have a total of 20 barrels. Dope. Close that bitch up, throw it in my backpack. Got it. <laughs> uh, and then I'm going to grab my jar with my Firefly buddy in it. I think you're muted there, Rain, or something. Oh, there we go. Sorry. My uh, thing freaked out. Um, so I want to go check out the door before we go, so you might want to leave your Firefly Absolutely. for a second. Um, oh, no. Oh, okay, got it. I see what yeah. you're saying. So I would say leave your Firefly for a second. I want to go make sure that what I'm looking for is not behind this door. Are you talking the western or eastern door? Oh, there's two. Um, I guess let's start with the eastern. Okay, you move over to it. I listen. You hear the sound of heavy snoring, but it seems to be one person. Okay. I will, I guess let me go listen at the other door first before I go in here. Okay. And see if I hear anything down there. Sure. On the other side, as you get close to the door, you hear the sound of multiple people snoring. Um, As rain comes back and passes me, I'm going to ask, did you hear anything? Uh, There's a single person snoring down there. More Um, people sleeping. Yeah. Um, Okay, be careful. And she's going to reach out and cast guidance on you again. Red. 
Yeah. So if I hear multiple people sleeping on the western end again. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> I will. I'm going to mute myself. <laughs> I will uh, head to <laughs> um, the eastern door and sneak in very quietly. Okay. Uh, roll me a stealth. You got it. Uh, 23. 23. Uh, you crack the door. And as you do, you notice a room pretty similar to the one below you, but this one is a little more lavish. Um, on the back of this, on the back of the chair, a large, long, like, leather coat sits with pretty decently, uh, interesting looking epaulets. You also notice what seemed to be um, a desk f covered with different papers, and as far as you can tell, just rolls of some kind, like uh, scrolls, uh, as well as a, a very large individual uh, sitting. Um, laying in the bed that is just next to the door, as well as a few other things like uh, small tables, uh, a basin, and that kind of stuff. Um, all right, I'm getting the feeling that this guy's probably the butcher. Uh, Amelia would be near the door that Rain's going into, uh, just in case anything happens. But she would be continually, like, having her light go off every now and then to keep the pattern up. Yeah. I get... Hey, uh... As you open the door, Rain, as they're kind of looking in, uh -huh. I want you to, uh, no, never mind. You keep doing what you're doing. What you doing? Oh, that's not not scary. Um, <laughs> 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 I will go. Well, God damn it. Apologies. That was not my intention. Okay. I'm going to go very quiet. <laughs> I'm going to go very quiet. <laughs> um, check out what's on the desk and check out these papers and scrolls, please. So quietly. Quiet okay. as mouse. What'd you roll for uh, your uh, stealth? It was in the 20s. Yeah, yeah I, I thought so. So you sneak over to the desk. You notice this a large map. It looks very, very much like um, uh, kind of dotted routes line every which way. It looks it looks similar to what you would expect you're looking for. Also, the next to it, there seems to be a few other uh, ledgers and a few uh, more kind of collections of papers. And on there, as you're kind of scanning over them, you see what look to be names as well as uh, numbers and they seem to correspond with amounts of men and uh, then it it kind of lists off uh, places they're going so I take it them. all you take it all <laughs> as you do the the large imposing figure in the bed kind of shifts and snorts and snores <laughs> and he goes back to snoring Obviously, anytime that happens, I take extra care to, like, pause and, yep, continue when he starts snoring again. Start packing all this up. Okay. Once I have it all, I'm going to get out of here. Sounds good. As you leave the door, um, you close it and return to Amelia. All right, let's get the fuck out of here. Uh, okay, uh, where do we want to light this thing? I mean, I'm pretty sure that's the butcher in there, so maybe this floor. Should we just set a barrel in front of his door? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, so, <laughs> just jump out the door or the window. Uh, so I guess we'll open up the portable hole again. Okay. And pull a barrel out. Uh-huh. And then close the, the hole back up. Put okay. it away. 
uh, I guess we'll, like, block this dude's door with it. Okay. Ooh, I will use my apricot door jam to jam his door so he can't get out. Oh my god, oh, yes. Oh shit. <laughs> yes. Uh, so yeah, you take... <laughs> With this, oh, you kind of worth it. <laughs> pop the top. Oh my god, beautiful! You kind of r roll the like you pull the barrel up and you put it next to his door. And as you do, uh, Rain, you just like pop the top off of your the jar, and you just stick your hand in in this giant sticky mess and just run it along the edge. And as you do, you notice it slide into the cracks and then solidify. And once you kind of like finish up and down the door, you notice it fills in all the edges of this door. As it does, it, it, it instantly becomes solid. And it looks like there's no line for the door at all. Like there's no edges, it's just one piece. Mm-hmm. And a slight hint of peach kind of <laughs> filters out. What a delicious burning. <laughs> it's going to mm. smell so good when it's on fire. <laughs> uh, I'm going to turn to Rain and say, do you think this one barrel will be enough? I mean, it's a wooden ship, right? Once it goes up, it... You're not I'd wrong about that. that. I'd rather not sacrifice more if we don't have to. Fair. Okay. Uh, but Amelia, so we're going to put it up against the door, and then Amelia is going to pop the top off of it and begin to make a trail of powder throughout the room so that we can light it from one end and then dip out and have some time to get to the next ship. Yep. Okay. So you do that. It doesn't take very long. You keep doing... Uh, are you continuing to do the, the light spell? Yes. Yes. Okay. To make sure the yeah, as long as we're on the ship in this room, that light spell is going off, yes. making sure that they think the troop is still happening. Okay. Uh, and you hear the sound of footsteps above you as you finish circling the room and with black powder. Uh, you make your full ring around. Do you go anywhere before you light it, and how do you light it? So we want to be on the op uh, on the opposite end of the room, and then uh, Amelia wants to try and peek out the window and see if she can get an eye on uh, the tiger shark. There are no windows on this floor. Oh, okay. The only the only port like portals you saw were the ones down below next to the cannons. There is the there is the staircase going up to the deck. But you'd have to go up to the deck to look out to see if you can see the tiger. Shark. Yeah, no. Uh, <laughs> should okay. we let uh, Metolius and Grimtuck know so that they can not be seen leaving the scene of the crime when this thing lights I up? Was, I was going to let them know before we leave. Okay. Give them a chance um, to get out of here and then light it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Amelia will head back downstairs then and just take a peek through one of the cannon portals and make sure she's got an eye on the tiger shark and make sure she knows where she's going. It doesn't take very long. As you look out, you can see the tiger shark kind of set within the uh, mid port. Okay. Um, off to the uh, western side. I get a good eye on it and I go back up to Rain and uh, I pull out a small piece of wire and kind of twist it up between my fingers and speak into it and I tell... Metolius, uh, we're already here. We're about to uh, head over to the Tiger Shark if you want to head that direction. <clears throat> uh, thank you. On our way. And I say that and I look to Grimtuck and we just grab the oars and start quietly making our way to the Tiger Shark. Mm -hmm. pushing, pushing off of the halberd. Sounds right. Um, and Amelia will look at Rain and say, uh, whenever you're ready. All right. Um, I was going to say, give them a few minutes to get away from the ship, and then let's do this. Uh, so Amelia will uh, point down at the beginning of her trail of powder that she made and cast Firebolt and light it. Okay. 
and then she's immediately going to cast Dimension Door and try to end up on the similar deck of the ship that we ended that we came in on the halberd, the cannon level of the ship. Okay. So, this all happens in mere moments. As you fu- as you fireball down, you hear that hiss of black powder as it begins to race around on the trail you led. And a moment uh, and as that keeps going, rain, you feel Amelia's arm around you as the uh, magical door opens up as you step through and you find yourself amid this dark hole as you hear just off in the distance a loud just crackoom as the halberd uh, explodes or at least seemingly part of it does and you find yourself in a dark room to your to the east to your right as you appear in this room you see the slight trickle of moonlight down from a staircase near you um, it seems to you seem to be that yeah, you seem to be at the back of it but you see the banister just a little ways um, more to the east and you can see that there's a bit of moonlight peeling through um, in this room though it's all quiet for a few moments and then this just loud just raucous boom echoes out and the whole ship shakes at this explosion you see you feel water just splashing and you hear just screams erupt out from this out from a, a distance of to the halberd effectively you also hear the sound of footsteps rushing up the stairs yep uh us. he should hide like immediately in front of you, in this room, there are cannons on either side lining the walls. There also seems to be a door far east past the staircase. To the west, there also there is a second door. And then just northwest from where you're standing, there is a small staircase. Up the staircase, you see a, a flash of light and the sound of footsteps running up. So... Uh, yeah, we... Amelia, are you still looking like one of them? (laughs) Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. That's helpful. I will hide. I will hide immediately. Um, Also, at this point, I would say, uh, Elduin, if you've joined the... If you've followed along with them, um, you're probably a decent amount away um, on the... Let's see, from the direction it was. As you turned your small rowboat and started rowing towards it, you you catch it at about the um, the very back of the ship. You're about 100 feet away, give or take. While um, Grimtuck and Metolius, you are getting closer and closer now. No more than about 20 or 30 feet away from the edge of the ship itself. You got it. As you've can, just I about same, can I do the same thing as before where I... I'm ready with an arrow for uh, some. Sure. For something you, that needs an arrow. I was saying <laughs> you don't get as well of a view from the very back of the ship, though you do see what looks to be the head of a sailor poking over the the top most uh, mm-hmm. portion of the ship. Um, right. Rain, you wanted to hide as this person starts to run up the stairs. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> uh, Amelia would also like duck down by one of the cannons. She's gonna not. She's gonna try and make it look like she's not hiding, but maybe like down there, like doing maintenance or something. Okay. As uh, you hear the steps rushing up the stairs, Rain, roll a stealth check. You got it. Uh, that'll be a twenty-three. Yeah, <laughs> twenty-three. Yep. A twenty-three. You sneak behind one of the cannons. Your um, dark form, cloak, as well as your just general stealthiness, you fade seemingly into the shadows. As Amelia starts to work on these cannons, you hear the sound of um, boots clopping up the stairs with a lantern in hand. And Amelia, you are now faced with this person who, like, stops for a moment as their lantern shines upon you. You're kind of blinded for a second. It looks at you and goes, Jimin? Jimin, 
What the hell are you doing on the ship? Never mind that. What the hell was that noise? Uh, roll a And I'm just going to run upstairs. Okay. Roll a deception check for me. Or, or a persuasion. I'll let you choose. I think they're going to be the same. Okay. They are the same. Okay, roll yeah, roll a deception check. Sixteen. Is your name Jimin? <laughs> <laughs> That's what he said. That's what I said. It's a, it's a good strong name. <laughs> it's no rando, but it'll do. What Jimin? Jimin too. As you turn and bolt, he kind of looks at you, and he cocks an eyebrow. As you start to run up the stairs, or try to get around to run up the stairs, you feel a hand uh, grab on you, and he actually rolls an athletics check to pull you back. Feel free to... Oh, that's a natural one. Feel free to do anything ah, about... <laughs> As you I slip... Uh, no, you can... Can I see you, this, or is this below deck? This is below deck. Uh, you slip out of his hands because that's... And he, you just kind of start rushing up the stairs. Uh, I'm going to. Uh, yeah, I'm going to grab my staff and expend a charge from it to uh, cast Charm Person. Okay. DC what? Uh, my DC is 17. And it's a. Uh... Wisdom uh, save. That's a sick. No, he doesn't make it. Just barely, but he does not make good, it. Good, good. Good, good. And I say, come on, mate. We need to find out what that was. And I usher him up the stairs. Uh, he goes, uh, yeah, of course. Of course. Let's go. And I just kind of like get behind him and I'm like pushing him up the stairs. And as we get about halfway up the stairs, I just let him keep going and I come back down. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> And that's the only person that rushed up was the one guy? Uh, that is the only person that rushed up is the one guy, though I'd like you both to roll a perception check. Got it. 18. Seven. <laughs> uh, Amelia, you don't seem to notice anything. The the You hear the guy uh, that you just pushed up the stairs kind of like calling out to the uh, whoever is above as you hear him just like uh, just like, what the hell is going on? Like, what was that? And you hear the another person kind of call in. There's an explosion on the Halbrid. It's burning up. Uh, and then Rain, you hear the sound of probably about maybe damn near what? Let's see. Uh, about five to ten more people start to move around below deck below you right now you also hear the sound off to your east off to the east of another person like a foot swinging and boots hitting the ground as uh footsteps start to go towards this door uh I would like definitely. I would like signal for Amelia to like get down with me. Okay. Um, and. Giggity. And I would. I think we should get out of here. There's a lot of people stirring right now. We should duck out of one of the cannon hatches and try to find Grim Tuck and Metolius. Well, we need to light this thing on fire, right? Yeah, I guess so. I was hoping to try to look for black powder, but hopefully there's enough on the so other side. So was I. Does there look to be any barrels on this level that we are on? Uh, roll a quick perception check as you start to hear the sound of um, rustling behind the door. That's to That's a 17. You notice that there seems to be another two uh, barrels on this floor that seem to coincide with uh, enough for the cannons to be restocked. Uh, I door jam the door. Ooh, how many do you have? Five. Nice. Uh, you rush over to the door and you just slather it. And a moment later, you start to hear a pounding on the door behind it. It's like, hey, what the fuck is this? 
I, uh, I pull that wire out of my pocket and I say, uh, I, I just point in whatever direction, hoping that I can hit wherever Metolius is. And I'm going to say, uh, making this one quick, better just move to the Black Prince. Uh, and I'm gonna s grab Rain and say, all right, we're going. <laughs> and start running over to the portholes. Okay. Uh, slamming on the door next to you as you start rushing over to the portholes. You pop the porthole open as you see the edge of something stick out from inside the door that's jammed. Um, and you see across the across the bay and you see Black Prince docked on the on the dock on the opposite side. And I tell I tell Rain to go. I go. You jump? Yeah. Okay. Uh, as she, I take off as my she water jumps. rocking ring before I jump, but I jump. Face <laughs> oh, first. Straight into the cement. Uh, yep. As she jumps, uh, my form drops, uh, and I go back to Pirate Amelia, and then uh, I pull up the hood on the cloak, uh -huh. and I send a fireball shooting at each of the barrels and leap. Okay. Uh, roll me one more perception check as you do. Uh, ten. Ten. You look over as you're firing the last bolt, and you see the blade pull out of the door, and you see an eye behind it. As you leap out the side, you hear, just as you're leaving the, the out of the porthole, you hear, Who the fuck was that? <laughs> <laughs> as the two of you hit water. Jimin, you what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> Jimin was the traitor the whole time. <laughs> the whole time. You besmirched um, his name. <laughs> as this occurs, as you land, as you both land at the water, you hear the lapping of the the slapping of oars as Grimtuck and Metolius kind of wheel up next to you. As just the top of this ship glows a light, a plume, a giant explosion just echoes out once again, kind of like ruck, um, roiling up the water around you and pieces of wood starts to rain down in this kind of hail of planks and bits and bobs and bodies now. Um, and then as you all kind of turn towards the, the port itself, towards Ocean Shade, you start to see bright lights, fires, and you start to hear the sound of combat come from the shore. And that is where I'm going to leave it for this one. Word. Oh man, that was oh. so good. Burn all the things <laughs> down. Nice. Dude, that was dope. That yeah. was epic. <laughs> yeah, that was really cool. Fuck. Uh, oh my god, guys. Oh my god. I'm like all shaky and shit. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Stay <Same> here. <laughs> Hello everybody, Dix here. Thanks for listening to another episode of the Swordcast Adventures. Be sure to check out our website, www.swordcastadventures.com for maps and extra content from our episodes. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, all at the Swordcast, and you can follow me at Just the Dix on Facebook and Twitter. If you're looking for even more bonus content, you can go to patreon.com slash the Swordcast, where for only five bucks a month, you can hear Matt Allspock DM some of our crew through the Tomb of Annihilation. Also make sure to check out the DM Advice Podcast Help Action where myself and three other DMs give you advantage on your role-playing experience every other week by answering your questions about D&D. Thank you all again so much for listening. The next episode of the Swordcast Adventures will be out July 6th. That's all for now. Stay safe and take care of yourselves. <laughs>